Pastor Don Dickerman, would you please come up here? Would you give him a good hand? The next few minutes, we want to do a kind of a interview soft, interview back and forth. And at the end of the service, after we're done, hello. <laughs> after we're done, you're going to have an opportunity to meet him, talk with him, and ask your own questions, find out more about his ministry. They do have representatives here, which I'm sure you will introduce here, that are lovely, godly women that we have known and gotten to love in this place. So, Papa Don, tell us, tell us, why do we need uh, the spiritual armor? Why, why is it important for the time we're living? Well, I think, I think you said all that. Uh, we, I think we are in, in intense times. And, but as believers, I, I believe this, that um, what's within us, he that's within us, is without doubt greater than he that's in the world. And uh, we, so we need to know who we are in Christ. We need to know who Christ is, and we need to know who Satan is. Mm. And until we understand those three things, we can't really be effective in, in uh, dealing with the, uh, what people call the enemy, but it's demon powers, it's, it's Satan's army, and the, they're real, they're all around us. And, uh, so we've been given authority in the name of Jesus. Amen. Uh, and that's, that's what I do. Uh, Tell us a little bit about what you do do. Mm, how much time do we have? <laughs> I know this is a very deep subject. And I just, we, tonight as we, we were meeting earlier, I said, I just want to get, get you, you know, appetites, just whet your appetites. There's no way we're going to get into any, any details tonight. But to introduce you to the reality of what this man does, and how important it is, but you, it's up to you whether you want to follow it up or not. So tell us what you do. Well, the, the, the Christian term, the accepted term in, in, in the church uh, is deliverance ministry. Uh-oh, you said the D word. D word, I know. Demons and D uh -oh. word. And another D word. Already, already people are getting nervous. Uh, is, this, is this stuff real? Are you making oh, it up? absolutely. Okay. You know, uh, I've been, I was in prisons ministering in 1974, and for 41 years, uh, I've been evangelizing in, in prisons all, all over the world. Been in over uh, 850 different prisons, uh, even most of the prisons in Arizona. But I, I've been to a couple of executions. Uh, I've seen God do some things that you can't talk me out of. Uh, I know it's real, and he, I know he's bigger than any problem that anybody's dealing with. But I think what many of us have failed to see is that uh, we're targets as believers. And it's not demon possession because we're possessed by the Holy Spirit. Amen. We're owned, purchased, bought with a price. But we can be, and most people are, oppressed by demon spirits. And they're real, you know. And so after preaching in prison so many years, I began to see what, what the problem was. That people were, the inmates, many of them were saved, but they come back to prison. They, they were born again, but they didn't they hadn't dealt with the issues of demonic oppression. Everybody's got an ancestry and ancestral curse is real. Ancestral blessings, <clears throat> that's real. We are what we've inherited from our ancestors. And the Bible calls uh, in, a very, in the uh, Ten Commandments, right in the heart of the Ten Commandments, he said, I will allow iniquity to continue for the third and fourth generation for the sins of the, four, the fathers. And I said last night in church, we, we use that term all the time, like father, like son. But that's, so, that's true. Demon spirits passed from generation to generation. And they get 
in our uh, makeup, not in, not in our spirit. That's where the Holy Spirit lives. But they can get in our soul. They get our mind, will, and emotions. What about body? What did they affect our body? Oh health? yeah, sure. Mm -hmm. I, I don't think I don't think you can separate healing from deliverance. Okay. Uh, now some of these things that you're talking about, the ancestry part, we all understand we have that. Mm -hmm. Could another one be by any chance that somehow we have opened a door somewhere not knowing oh, sure. that we have yeah, what could yeah. be the possibility? I, I would say uh, in any church I go to, we always do a, like a corporate deliverance afterwards. And I, I'm talking about any church. Uh, it'll be 75 or 80 percent of the people are released of demon spirits. Uh, well, it's, that's uncomfortable for people to talk about because there's a stigmatism goes with it, you know, right. head spinning and green you know and throwing against the wall and it's just a movie i think yeah but i yeah. mean most people right. don't want to talk about it right. uh it's not you don't hear it talked about much from the pulpit right. uh, or sunday school rooms it's just an avoided subject that brings me to a point i want to say when, when you said that subjects is avoided is not discussed are you telling me that some people think if i leave the devil alone the demons alone <laughs> they're going to leave me alone yeah is that the case yeah well i think it's easier to just pretend they're not around oh yeah so if we say they're not going to bother us if we don't bother them we're living in an altered reality yeah, right and we never deal with it uh -huh. yeah uh, so we, we over since 1990 i don't know early 20 22 23 years i've been doing deliverance ministry and in in the prisons i thought well yeah they're inmates sure they they might have demons well, it's everybody if you if you're breathing there's a good chance you've got demon spirits oppressing you. Oppressing and, you now. Oppressing. There's a huge difference. Yeah, Jesus was was a, a, a man full of the Holy Spirit who went about doing good and healing all those who were oppressed of the devil. That's what he did. And uh, he came, the Bible says, to destroy the works of the devil. Yes. Well, that's what demons do. Demons were at one time angels. They rebelled against God. Demons are warring against believers. Angels minister for us. And that's going on all the time. And our reality of dealing with it has a whole lot to do with what either one of those kingdoms do. Uh, you can energize the demonic kingdom by the way you talk, the way you think. Demons just been saying, thank you, man. Appreciate you saying that. That's what's that's where it's gonna be. Uh, and you you speak truth and in, in scripture, and the angels just say, give me something to work with. Yeah. Uh, those two kingdoms are so real. Uh, if you if we could see in the spirit realm, and I'm not saying I'm special, but I I, I kind of got this now, you know. If you can see in the spirit realm like over the city of phoenix there's not a couple of demons there's thousands and thousands yeah. and thousands and thousands and what what's kind of being taught and has been taught in the church is well let's just cast them down you can't do that that's out of your realm of authority mm -hmm. you'll pick a fight's what you'll do uh -oh. but you can deal with yourself and people who come in contact with you. And the Bible, Jesus said, cast them out. And I've, I've learned something over the years. You can't counsel them out. That's good. You can't medicate them out. You can't pray them out. You gotta cast them out. And Jesus gave us authority to do that. Okay, that authority you're talking about. Could any demon come and do anything to me or any believer without me giving them permission to mm, do that to me. No. So no. you mean I have the authority to yeah. tell them, get behind me? And once you cancel their permission that's to be That's right. There. Yeah. But at some point, the door that was open, permission was given, and they come in and they reside. And they say when they reside, they normally don't come. They, they, they bring a bunch with them, reinforcement. Yes. They don't come along. Yes. You may have opened the door thinking you opened the door to one, but seven or eight or ten came in. 
Yeah. And they're watching you. So the only way is to cancel that permission? Yeah. You, you know, and, and I, learned, I learned this through day in and day out, people coming, people coming, of like going to school with the Holy Spirit. I said, uh -huh. oh, I get that. I see that. Yeah, yeah. And after 22, 23 years, you see a pattern. And it's all about permission. If you don't grant them permission, they can't just walk in and say, hey, let's get Saeed. Well, there's no doorways. That's right. There's no permission. When he gives us permission, we're on it. They're, and they're all, watching to see. They're always looking. If you open any doors, they're waiting behind the door, ready to jump in. So, yeah, and, and the key is canceling the permission. Is that what basically deliverance is? Absolutely. Wow, that was too simple <laughs> to understand. You mean there's nothing weird or wacky no. or no. my head's not going to turn around and, <laughs> and I'm not going to make all these noises no. like I've watched on the movie? No. You tell me none of that's going to happen. You know, it's, it's just like us sitting here talking, wow. but I'm addressing the, de the demon. I mean, people say, you have conversation with demons? No, I have confrontation with them. Ah. So who are you? What do, you, what, do you have permission to be here? Does God say you can be here? Mm. God would say, yeah, you can be there if, for instance, there's unforgiveness. That's permission. So let's say, well, Saeed, let's, let's deal forgive. With that. Let's yeah. deal with it. As soon as he confesses it, and God's so faithful when we confess our sin. Yes. I mean, so faithful. You confess it, I'll forgive it. So once that unforgiveness is removed the demon's legal right is removed and it, it's, it's not any harder that you won't be free from that yeah well in the name of jesus leave him right now go into the abyss don't come back don't send others to replace you that door is closed and we see that happen all the time and the other thing we see happen is many people get healed because that was the source of the problem uh, yeah. And it can be, people say, what's the most common thing you see? It's mental illness, confusion. Uh, I don't know who I am, I don't know what I'm doing. I, that's a, I mean, that's a demon's strong point. Can we use an example here tonight if we have permission from Ronnie? Yes. Can you come up here, Ronnie? And now let me tell you your story because I think I can tell it quicker. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I know I can. I just, yeah. I met this man at our home Sunday night. And I may not tell you the story exactly, but you'll get the gist of it. He met him in prison in 1987. And he was dying of the hepatitis C. And they had given you how long? I had 125 years. 125 years in jail he had. And hepatitis C was killing him. But by God's divine appointment, this man goes into the prison and meets this man. And he prays with them. And he delivered, he's delivered him from the diseases that he had. And they were actually, he saw in there that there were something in there that were eating. And he, he casted them out. This man had only a few months, the doctors, to live. That's what, 1987? 1989 and he's still here he's healthy never had any any signs of that now he loves the lord he lives for the lord he helps this man they go around the country he found this calling but the devil assignment for his life was to kill him in jail and if he couldn't kill him in jail keep him in jail for 125 years but god had a different plan yeah. and and god used this man to come and cancel the plan of the de devil had on his life so he can fulfill his calling. Yes. yes. This is the power of being delivered. Amen. It's not weird. It's not wacky. It's, it's, it's real, folks. Yes, absolutely. It's real. Absolutely. And he is standing right here testifying that he's alive. You can see he's alive. You know, let, let and me, you can see he's free. Yeah, let me add something to that. When, when Ronnie, uh, when he got out of prison, he called me. He said... Uh, and, and I didn't, we didn't know each other well. I just knew him as an inmate and that, you know. But he said, I've been diagnosed with hepatitis C and they've given me five years to live. And they, this was 2003 when this happened. But he said, uh, would you pray for me? And he's talking about courtesy prayers. You know how we just you 
pray for me, I'll pray for you. And that usually never happens. No. <laughs> but uh, he called. I said, well, Ronnie, why don't, why don't you come for deliverance? Because I, I've seen that's the kind of stuff demons do. He said, oh, no, I put the needles in my arm. I, I opened the doors. And I said, well, they don't need to stay open. We can close them. And uh, I said, all you got to lose is a couple of demons. If that's not what it is, you you walk out of here and see be the same guy. But there were five hepatitis C demons that identified themselves, identified their their work, what they did, and they've all come to steal, kill, and destroy. Amen. And that's that's their goal for your life, is to steal something, kill something, destroy something, and that's what they were doing to him. Well, what is Jesus' plan? Oh, to come it, and yeah, and to give, give life, life, give it more abundantly. Opposite. You see, yeah, exactly. The demons who rebelled, the angels who rebelled against God were created to do something good, uh, like to, to give peace, to give health, to these kind of They were created with that purpose. When they rebelled, they became opposites. And demons, angels that were created to bring peace as a demon, they're bringing depression and hopelessness mm. and turmoil. And so that, that's what we're living in. So to put it simply, could we say that when the demons came in, they, they came by me opening a door somehow, yeah. and they replaced the plan of God with their plan. Yes. So what you did during the deliverance was you replaced the replacement with the original plan of yeah. God, correct? And, and, and what he did was just confess. Exactly. Right. Yeah, exactly. And as long as the door stays shut, they can't come in. No. That's the key. That's the key. Folks, let me tell you, there are many of us here, many of you here. I don't know you, and many of you watching. You are living in that prison that he was living in. Mm -hmm. Yours just doesn't have bars. Amen. You think you're free, but you're not. You're living in a prison. That sickness that you might have, that oppression you might have, that disease that you might have, that financial problem that you might have, that can go on and on. That's your prison. And the demons have come and put you in that prison, replace God's plan and calling for your life with their plans and calling. All you have to do is replace God's original plan back into your life. That's the important. That's why we had this man and his group come here tonight. Folks, all of you know, I'm the least spooky, weird person that you ever meet. And when the spooky and weirdness happens in this place, I stop it. I call it out. I say, you're out of order, brother. You're out of order, sister. And you've seen me do it. But when the Holy Spirit shows up with peace, decency and order, we welcome him. We want everything that the Holy Spirit has. But when somebody flares up in the middle of a meeting, they're bringing attention to themselves. That is not the Holy Spirit. It's the replacement that has tried to come in this place, replace what God is trying to do in this place. That's why we don't allow it and we stop hmm. it. That's why God is blessing this place. Those of you who come, you know this is a safe place. He can invite your boss to this place and he won't be embarrassed. Worried that something bad is going to happen to embarrass you. Yeah. They're going to come in, they're going to sense the presence of God. We can even discuss something as D word. D word. <laughs> in this place, in the middle of this place, I feel comfortable that you're going to receive it because you know it's done in decency and order. There's another D word, decency. Yeah. Would you yeah. place the D word yeah. with decency? Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Because of our time frame here, I just wanted to give him 20 minutes here to dis just whet your appetite. They will be here after the end of the service. Now, my two sisters, come up here. And I want you to just quickly tell, tell us about them and who they are, what they do here, what they work out of here, out of Arizona. Pastor Sh Shella and Christina. Christine. And they're your representatives, your well, protégés. Yeah, yeah. Yes? I guess. You know, what, what ha these ladies are from Haiti originally. If anybody knows about demons, Haitians do. Trust me, yes. voodoo, right? 
Well, they they came to our office in Texas after reading the a spiritual warfare Bible. I don't know if you've heard it or seen it, but we've got some comments in there, and they somehow they got that Bible and saw some of our comments, checked out our ministry, and decided to come to Dallas Fort Worth uh, for deliverance. Well, I didn't know who they were. I, I mean, they, they come from all over the world, literally. Uh, and I'm not always the one doing the deliverance. Sometimes it's it's our team members. But they came. I didn't even see them. Did, did we see each other that day? Uh, but after after they left, Cherie, Cherie, stand up. Our uh, she does our she's our office manager. She's she's kind of my boss. She's, you know she she really does run everything. But she called me and said, uh, "Would you be willing to go to Arizona to a Haitian church?" I don't know. Say that again. <laughs> but we did, and met these ladies. They had experienced deliverance. Now they're doing deliverance all over this city. And uh, I was at her church. Uh, Sunday morning and we were together last night at another church but th th they under they know how to do this and it's not a big deal and they and are part of this prayer ministry here they're faithful prayer warriors that come when they can to this place only for one reason God called them to come here and sit back there and pray for this place I didn't even know them for a long time God put us together to know they're real they're the real deal Yes. And there are our contacts here in Arizona. We will have brochures back there. We can give to you at the end with their, with their address and number. You, these are women you can trust. I would not bring anyone here that I don't trust, that they haven't been proven. Yes. And this group that you see here tonight, you can trust. And you could. Now it's up to you. All we did here tonight is introduce you to the opportunity. It's between you and God what you do with it after here. Nobody's here taking any names, say, come and be the... No, 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 no. You go and ask God, where do you want to do? Where do you want to take it? You met the man, the founder, the, the, the papa of this ministry. <laughs> this is their daughter, and we are their new family. We just, we are, all of us became his new family in the prayer room. So you can trust this family. They're part of this family. What you do with it from this point on, those of you who are watching, want more information, call us, contact us. We'll be glad to give you. All we are, we are connecting these people with you. That's all. Well, let, let me just say, it's, uh, our ministry, if you want to look on the website, it's just dondickerman.com. D-I-C-K-E-R-M-A-N. Dondickerman.com. Check out the ministry. And then if you're interested, these ladies are our local representatives. We want to what, thank what you. Did you say? They can fly to Texas. <laughs> Papa Don, we want to thank you oh, my, for taking the time blessing. to come here. My blessing. You have blessed us. Have you been blessed by what he shared tonight? Amen. Thank you so much. Thank you, ladies. And we can, like I said, at the end when we are... I didn't want to take too much time but I wanted to give enough time also that we could discuss to all that we need to discuss because when we don't want to take the focus away from what God is doing in this place which is worshiping him praying to him and thanking him